there, everybody. How's it going? Welcome back to another awesome episode of On the Throttle with Jackie Van Ham and my buddy Jack Turkey out here bringing you all the breaking news every single week, no matter where we are out here in the world. Because this week, Josh, I'm out here in Las Vegas for AIM Expo, which is the American, the largest motorcycle power sports trade show. This is the business to business show. It kicks off this afternoon. Um, I have, to, however, a couple little sneak peek photos and things, a little behind the scenes things going on. And that's going to be what I'm going to be talking about for today's program. What are you talking about today, Josh? Well, it's been kind of interesting. Is Honda headed for the mountains? There's a certain mountain range that they are targeting, and we will talk about that. And then the other Ooh. thing, I'm just going to add something else about there's some speculation that someone may be pulling the covers off of something where you're at, and I want you to go take a peek for me. Ooh, well, you would be totally accurate. It's going to be all sorts of launches, reveals, and all sorts of fun stuff going out of here. We'll get to that in just one moment after this word from our sponsor. Welcome back, everybody. Well, unless you have been hiding under a rock somewhere or just not tuning into our weekly show, which shame on you if you have not been. We have been talking about AIM Expo for months now leading up to this show out here in Las Vegas. And it is set to be a amazing show this year. I come almost every single year. This has to be the largest show so far. The show, the actual show floor as far as renting booths goes, is completely sold out. I don't think I've ever heard that phrase used before out here. Let's go ahead and jump on into some of the details this week out here at AIM Expo. So there's going to be over 370 exhibitors showing um, the latest power sports machines, accessories, gear, parts, and services. We've got nearly two dozen OEMs and major distributors, including automatic distributors, drag specialties, parts unlimited, turn 14 distribution, and Rocky Mountain ATV motorcycles out here. Um, it is all found on more than 225,000 square feet of show floor space inside the Las Vegas Convention Center, one of the largest in the world, by the way. This is two full days of education sessions and seminars going on, as well as all of these exciting launches and reveals and products and things and stuff. There's a industry party powered by Turn 14 Distribution. There's going to be Super 73 Industry E-Bike Throwdown. That's right, some indoor racing is going on out here as well. Um, brought back this year is a really, really cool two-wheel custom bike show and a four-wheel, that's right, side-by-side -side ATV UTV, ATV UTV showcases here as well. Uh, that bike show I'm really, really stoked about. A couple of really big players are out here showing bikes. They're competing for uh, the top dog prize out here at AIM Expo. Some of the bikes have even been featured here on Motorcycle Power Sports News. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be a heck of a show. And I got around um, last night as we were setting up our display. I took a quick lap around uh, the setup area and took some snaps, a little bit of behind the scenes of what's going on, because these bikes are bikes that I have not, I think almost all of them are bikes that I have not had the chance to see live and in person yet. So I wanted to go ahead and throw these up on today's program. This is the motorcycle from Rivid. Josh, you and I have talked about this bike a handful of times. I've even interviewed the CEO. I'm really looking forward to seeing this bike. It does not disappoint. The fit and finish on these guys was really exceptional. I had the chance to talk with some of the staff while they were setting up their very beautiful display as well. This is the company that got a big handful of cash handed to them by the state of California to go ahead and expand their production capabilities in San Bernardino, if I remember that correctly. Uh, they are now, I believe, producing approximately 100 or 200 machines a week. It was explained to me that the reason why the production is not even faster than that, although I think that's pretty impressive, uh, the reason the, the number is not even faster than that is because every single battery that goes into these bikes is individually tested, and that is a time test. Uh, so I thought that that was really kind of fascinating. Anyway, that's the new machine from Rivid. Uh, this is live and in person. This is in customers' hot little hands as we speak. And they were really, really beautiful. And I can't wait to ride one. Um, as Josh and I have also talked about at the program an awful lot, Kobe Bikes. So Kobe Bikes is out here. They are displaying several machines. They've got a very sport bike styled machine on display. They, of course, have several of their very cool rally bikes. This is one of them. 
Uh, next slide, please. I'm really looking forward to chatting with them a little bit about the vice over at Kobe. This is an escape, which I absolutely am over the moon over. Anytime we have a chance to talk about, you know, middleweight type ADV or some new players in the ADV space, I always bring this up. I think this is just so dead sexy. Uh, this is from the folks over at Moto Marini. They are also going to be unveiling here for the first time in the U.S. They're going to be unveiling this year's Escape, and they're going to be unveiling the cruiser bike that they revealed at ICMA. Um, all right, next slide. So this was interesting. I was just hot. I was heading to the front door. I I didn't think there was anything else to see, and I saw two gentlemen kind of talking about talking around and fussing around this bike, and I was like. That's the new BSA, and the new BSA is not available in the U.S., or is it, Josh? Because actually I had a chance to talk to these gentlemen. These two gentlemen are out here shopping for dealers. These, these two folks are going to be the North American either distributors or importers. I, I'm a little fuzzy on that detail. It doesn't matter. Either way, they are in charge of bringing this brand-new BSA here to the, U, or to the USA, I should say, and I'm really excited about that. I had the chance to talk to them a little bit about the bike. I know that the number that we're all waiting for here in the U.S. is money, 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 money. And this bike is going to be coming in at around the $7,000 price point is their, is their guesstimation for this machine. Um, they have not quite nailed that all the way down yet, but they said it would be approximately about that. So for seven grand, you can have this very, very beautiful bike. This is, again, a bike that is paying homage to the original Frit Bike BSA. This is made by... This is either Mahindra or Bajaj. I don't remember off the top of my head. I apologize. It's called Classics Unlimited, I believe, is the arm of either of those companies. I know that this bike is made in India. This bike is sold in Asia market. This bike is also sold in, I believe, EU and UK market as well. But the big thing to know about this bike is that this is actually being produced in Birmingham, just like the OG bike. And I thought that that was pretty cool. And the fit and finish on this was really, really lovely. This was a really, really nice machine. I'm really, I can't wait to see and read and hear more about it. Okay, what else do I got in the slides, Ashley? Is that it? Looks okay. like that so is, yeah, so it's, the, it's, those... it's, to me, that one right there, that last, the BSA, that's interesting because you know what? That is a priced right, do it all, great, great, great looking bike. To me, that is, that is the, that is the big winner that I'm going to pick out of there. You all know that the Kove is in my, I mean, I want yeah. that in my Christmas stocking. The BSA yes. is, I mean, to me, as far as the industry goes, it, it looks phenomenal. I was, it, when I was looking at the photos earlier, that exhaust on it is beautiful. Yes. Um, yeah. The bend it's and everything massive. like that. It's, it's yeah. a mandrel bend. It's nice. I, I mean, for the $7,000 to cruise around on that thing, if that's the price point they're going to be at, as long as they can get people interested, uh, get people knowing that it's out there, the interest is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm right. It is, I think it's Bajaj. I took a real quick. I, I apologize. Sure. Yeah. I took a quick. I took a quick uh, look real quick to see if we, if I could track it down. And it is BSA. We're talking about Frederick Douglass Slumber's Indian owners, Mahindra. There we go. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Makes so that's that is who. That is who's, of course, I know both of them are big players. Both of them have repopped and have relaunched a several. Um, antique yep. and classic brands. So I got, I got a little confused there, but yes, indeed it was Mahindra. So, so no shortage of cash to be thrown behind this project. And so I'm very, very pleased to see that this is going to be coming into us market. And that is the scoop Woo! here on the old, on, on the throttle, because I don't think anybody else has that story. yet. look at us go out here, Josh, what you got going on for your second story or for your first story? Just, I, should say. As I was say, speaking of scoops, um, Honda decided that they may be going to the Himalayas, but not the mountains, <laughs> the motorcycles. And this is something that's kind of interesting. So it was dug up by a another publication, the patent drawings that uh, we can show here that appear to very much show that this is from <gasps> Honda. But boy, does that look like another motorcycle we've seen before, Jackie, that sold like hotcakes. So what's kind of interesting about this is when you look at this is, I, I mean, Honda's looking at this probably for the Indian market, um, which once again, we've talked about and is a huge market, huge, huge, huge market. Um, in that, they are looking at saying, hmm, why not put a couple of more inches of suspension travel underneath it, give it a hair more upright seating position, maybe windscreen 
screen, and suddenly we've got a do-it-all bike that everyone loves. Um, this would be based off of, it looks like, their CB350, like I said, with some extra suspension travel few other small things. There was also the possibility of a scrambler version that could be out there. Um, so oh. there's good and bad with this. Some of the good with this is it looks like it's going to use the existing 348cc engine, which is proven to be reliable. It's, I mean, Honda sells that engine in a ton of other areas. Um, the downside to that is it, it is between 20 and 21 horsepower. So you are not going to gain sleeve length riding this bike, but very manageable <laughs> for, for most anyone. Um, in this, it is, I mean, we've said this a hundred times, the market in India is the largest market in the world. When you see photos, videos, anything like that from India, people are on motorcycles more than they are in cars. It's like the inverse of here in the U.S. Um, so with it being that big of a market to have a great bike that you can sell, that just goes over there and it gives people that versatility they want. Yes. Um, like I said, they already sell the CB350 model, which you can see in this photo right here. Excellent timing for that one to come up. Um, yeah. That is that is, uh, it, that is available once again overseas. You can see how it would be very easy to turn that into something else with, like I said, some longer legs underneath it and suddenly you got something that you can bounce across non-paved sections of road. Um, now, the CB350 currently isn't available in North America yet, but there are rumors of a global launch possible, which to me seems like it could be a really cool bike for this area, just because of the fact, I mean, once again, we've talked about how much these commuter bikes and stuff like that, the small urban bikes, people are loving them. And this fits right into that category. Anyone can sling a leg over it. I would sling a leg over it and have a ton of fun with it. Um, something else that's kind of interesting with that is that really would be a Himalayan competitor in someone's own backyard, which I find very, very interesting when it comes to that. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about real quick is because you're out at AIM, there is something rumored to be happening, Jackie, that uh, obviously, I mean, you know what I typically talk about. And in our next slide here, we mentioned that this was kind of kind of brought out before CF Moto has possibly uh, kind of alluded to or some other people have said, mm, maybe this is coming to the U.S. This is the 450 MT. Um, liquid cooled mm. parallel twin, 44 horsepower. Um, this is, I mean, at 44 horse out of that, I mean, a 450 twin, first off, great power mm. as long as they can keep the weight down on it. CF Moto has done a phenomenal job of keeping, uh, uh, of making great fit and finish bikes that are fitting within a budget. Um, I don't know how many of you have heard that 450 in their sport bike. Um, it sounds ridiculous for a 450. I, I mean, it sounds amazingly, I mean, ridiculous in a good way, not in a bad way. Yeah. Um, that being said, this is looking like it's going to come, like I said, 21 inch, 18 inch, 21 and 18 inch wheels, um, KYB suspension, and, and... This is the real kicker. It's listed at right around like 8,400 in Australia, which would put it at just over six grand here in the US, which for yeah. a twin, that's 450, that's 44 horsepower, that's got the fairing and the whole nine yards. Yeah. My question with this is, so between Kove, between CF Moto, they're coming up with these middleweight adventure slash rally bikes that are getting eaten up. They're both Chinese companies. Are they coming to eat everyone else's lunch because everyone else is slow to the game? Uh, if they see this, Jackie, I want text messages. I want phone calls and I want pictures. Yeah. If this is if they pull the cover off at this of the show, I better know. Yeah, well, they are. Uh, I just I just double checked the schedule as far as who is doing uh, new bike launches. Uh, here at the show, or new bike presentations, I should say, uh, and they are on they are on the schedule. So there's a real strong chance that this this might be sneaking on out here. So you know, Send the second that me. that happens, I will be <laughs> grabbing a photo. I'll be texting you, Josh, you you Josh personally. Uh, but you know, we will also we will also be talking about it here on the program. We love to bring you all the breaking news going on out here. 
Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. This is just a quick show for today. I just wanted to peek in from AIM Expo and let you know what's going on out here as well. Give you a little bit of scoop, uh, as we always do, keeping you keeping keeping the finger on the pulse on the pulse of motorcycling out here, Josh. Uh, we'll be back next always. week. I will have much more in-depth coverage from out here at AIM Expo. So make sure you hit that notifications on, subscribe, like, do all the things and all the stuff. And we will see you next week.